Hey there folks, my name is Dan Bell and today we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams file management. File management with uh, Microsoft Teams, which actually uses a SharePoint document library, provides really a, a host of options for working collaboratively on all sorts of documents. And we're going to take a look at those right now. First up is going to be uploading files. And what we want to do is navigate to the team, team channel. Uh, that we want to upload that document to and select the files tab. So currently I'm in uh, X1050 launch team on the general channel there. And what I want to do is uh, select files here. And you can see that currently I have some files already uploaded in this particular library. When I click the upload button, I can select either a single files or a folder. So just for instance, if I want to upload a folder worth of documents, I can go ahead and select folder. And then I can actually look for you know, a certain folder that might have multiple documents in here and select that and upload that. And you can see in the right, uploading five items, including the folder. And there it is, completed guides. And when I click on that, you can see the documents that were in it. It's a very quick, very easy, single uh, file. You know, just a little bit different process here, right? Maybe I want to select the add a new user and admin quick reference guide, select it, click open and that would open that single doc again you can see it uploading and then there is the actual document uh one um yeah, there's another way too if you're used to the drag and drop kind of way to do things right i can go ahead and and drag and drop documents here so let's go to my document library and maybe we want to bring on that uh, how to choose uh, between project online and dynamics psa click drag it and then when I do that, you can see a gray line, gray box going around all the documents. And when the gray box is there, that means I can let it go. And what should happen is you can see uploading one item. And then there it looks like it finished it. And then there's that document, how to choose between Project Online and Dynamics PSA. Okay, so another uh, option here is to actually create new files within Teams. And you'll know while we're in, you know, again, we're in the channel, we're in the files tab here. There's a new button, I can click on new, and then I have a number of options here. I can either create a new folder in which I, which I want to store documents, or I can just start out uh, creating a new Office document. And so for instance, I can select Word, and it'll ask me to provide a name immediately. And this will open Word up in the web app. Okay, And then I would obviously start creating content in my document here. When I'm done, I would just close the document out and there's automatic testing, uh, saving that's taking place throughout the entire time. So if I look here, there's my sample document for test that I just created within this document library using um, the create document option within that library. All right, another option is to actually move files and folders in the system. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move a file in this case, and I'm gonna use the add a new user and admin here. Now a couple ways I can do this, I can select the document here and then there's gonna be a move button uh, right here in the toolbar or the ellipsis here, I can select that and there will be a move selection option right here as well. Either one's gonna get me to the same place and currently it, the, I'm being shown where I am. I can go ahead and navigate up and I can upload it to a different channel within the same team or I can go even higher and select a completely different team right to move the document to but we're going to go back to here and we're going to put it in design going to go ahead and click move you can see file has been moved and if i were to go to design channel here and then select files i should see that document is there and there it is an add a new user and admin uh, document All right a uh, file conversations file conversations uh, about a file will post a message to your team channel conversations tab so others in the team will be able to view that comment and the replies and they'll be able to keep up to date as to what's going on with certain documents in here. So it's a little different than the word track changes in this particular case. So let's go ahead and run through this particular process. I click on files here and we'll go ahead and open uh, setting. Actually, let's open that sample doc we just created here. We'll click directly on it. And here's my document opened up and you can see it's open for editing currently. And what I want to do is I want to actually have a conversation about it. And we'll click the conversation button there. And I'm going to tell Bob to actually review this document. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a add sign there and then type in Bob and then you can see there's Bob. Could you review this document please? And then press enter to post it. 
and you can see that the item has posted here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the document. And what I want to do is confirm that within the channel of, uh, within the post area of that channel, that that particular post will show up. And there it is, just sent, Bob Johnson, uh, could you review this document please? All right, so, so that conversation will get posted to the main channel uh, so that other people can actually engage in that conversation that's taking place. All right, let's go back to my files. So let's go ahead and we'll click on sample doc for a test again. And this time we want to comment on files. Commenting is public. Comments are going to be saved within the file itself and they're going to be visible to anyone viewing the file, right? So that the team members and non-team members. So what does that, uh, you know, commenting actually look like here? Well, if I go to the review ribbon here, I can start here by just posting a new comment on the document. Okay. So we'll go ahead and engage with Bob again. Did you finish the review? I can assign it to Bob here, right? Or I can just post it. And notice that we get that little item here. It's the speech bubble. That speech bubble will be present to anybody else now who opens this document to let them know that, hey, there is uh, some, some uh, you know, comments going on with this document. You, know, you can either show comments here or you can see the comments off to the side, right? So again, another uh, interesting feature within Microsoft Teams file collaboration. We'll close out of the document. So let's look at tracking files and folders. Let's say you have an important document that you're working on. And you want to be notified immediately uh, when somebody has updated that document. Now, how is that, that particular item handled? Uh, well, firstly, we have to actually handle it and select those alerts in the SharePoint site. Uh, because the, the, the SharePoint site will have additional options available to us that aren't here in Teams. Okay, So when I click uh, open in SharePoint, another window will open and ultimately I'll, I'll see the same document library except here it's just basically the SharePoint interface. And this will allow me to perform additional functionality not available within Teams. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, I can either set these alerts at the library level to be alerted about any document being changed or I can do it with a specific document. For instance, maybe this PowerPoint, how to choose between online and Dynamics PSA. I want to be alerted the moment somebody makes a change to it. If I click on the ellipsis, bring up that menu, you'll notice toward the bottom there's an option for alert me. If I select that, a dialog will come up and it will allow me to configure some parameters to be alerted uh, with regards to changes of this document. And you can see currently, that's the name of it. It's going to alert me when this particular document is changing. Um, here's where you can specify who gets the alerts. Uh, I am selected by default. Here is the delivery method. Currently it's selected to email. Uh, if you add text messaging configured in your system, you'd be able to select that. What type of changes do I want to be alerted to? Anything, uh, someone else changes, uh, you know, a document. Uh, when do I want to be notified? Well, I want to be notified immediately. And, and when I set it, I can go ahead and click okay. And this is actually creating the alert within the system. As though now the moment this document's changed, I will get an email alert notifying me to that change and help me keep on top of that. If I want to um, manage the alerts, let's say I've created one and I want to get rid of it, in this uh, toolbar here, you'll note the ellipsis off to the right. If I click on that, um, I have two options, alert me and manage my alerts. And if I click the latter, this will let me see what alerts are currently created within the site by me. The compliance document, I have an alert set for that. And I also have an alert set for the how to choose between project line and Dominic's PSA document. And I can select one if I want and delete the select alert if I want to get rid of it. And there you go. And that's how we would go ahead and uh, manage alerts within this particular site. Okay, so let's go back and talk a little bit about file version history. Again, I'm, I'm going to keep it in SharePoint here because I need to be in SharePoint to access this particular functionality. File version history is a quick and simple way to give your team a little buffer when working collaboratively. It allows a team owner to roll back any changes to a, uh, and restore a previous version of a document in case we went a little bit too far, made some changes that we didn't want to happen. Uh, it's a great way to be able to restore back and save yourself some uh, some additional work, All right? Um, my my compliance document. Now here's one document that I can look at. Okay, so if I were to uh, want to view the version history, I can either select the document or click the ellipsis. If I select it, I use the ellipsis up here. 
and there are some options and one of the options is to take a view of the uh, version history and here are all the times that this document has been updated looks like a lot of updates um, within july uh, august and then we had some updates within february and at this point i could click on the arrow next to you know, one of these documents maybe back in july and if i click restore I'm gonna get a message stating that I'm about to replace the current version with the selected version. If I want to do that, I can just click OK. And now the version of the document has been rolled back to a prior. Okay. Um, if I wanna roll back to the one immediately prior to this change, this is the one I just made, 213.21.304. If I wanna roll back to the previous before that, again, click Restore from the drop down arrow. Go ahead and click and there should be another one here. And again, they're both at 304 because we made those changes Pretty, pretty quick, quick in succession. Document checkout. Uh, this is a, a particular piece of functionality that will ensure only one person is able to edit a file at a time. And you know, while this does reduce collaboration capabilities of the tool set and working on documents, it does ensure that there's only one copy of each file which may be useful for policy documents. And so it could be a good thing to use. Um, we do have a lot of customers that use this particular piece of functionality. How do you use it? Well, um, if we were to, for instance, say this compliance document, we want to check it out such that nobody else can edit it. I can click on the ellipsis here and all the way down here to the more option. I can see that there's some options here and one of them is check out. I can select check out here. You can see I have a little notice lets me know it's been checked out. Uh, and when I put focus off the item, you can see that there's a little arrow, maroon arrow there or reddish arrow. And when I hover over it, it'll let me know that I have this item checked out so others cannot edit it. I can either check in or discard this current check out state. And so if I make some changes to the document and I'm ready to check it back in, you know, again, I can go to this menu here or I can have the item selected, go up here. And here are my two options, check in or discard. If I select check in, this gives me an opportunity to put comments in here. And if you're ever going to use the version history and roll back, these comments would be really good to document what kind of changes you made. Therefore, it'd be easier to identify what previous version you may want to go back to, right? Uh, when you're done entering comments, select check in. I can see the message here stating it's been checked back in. And we see that that arrow is now gone in this particular case and the items checked in. And there you go, folks. There are some really neat file management capabilities within Teams and SharePoint. I uh, hope this helped you out. If you have any comments, suggestions, feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks very much and have a great afternoon.